Epson have been involved with a, one of the somatostatin analogues. This is called somatuline or lanreotide. They've done two major studies uh, with this. Uh, they were preceded by many years by uh, another pharmaceutical company that had developed other somatostatin analogues that have been used for the treatment of the symptoms but not for the treatment of the tumor. Epson have done two major trials. The first trial that was reported in the New England Journal of Medicine by Martin Kaplan was called the Claronet trial. And that trial was successful in showing they could contain the progression of growth of the carcinoid tumors. The second major trial was the, called the ELECT trial. And uh, that study was reported recently. It was shown with this that th this could control the symptoms. That's the flushing, the diarrhea, the abdominal pain, and some of the cardiovascular effects. That study was reported last year. I happen to be the first author uh, of the paper. What uh, we've done now is to say is are there individual characteristics within the study population that would distinguish whether you would respond or you would not respond to somatuline therapy. It's a very neat study design. It said let us look at people who are either virgins to the use of somatostatin, they somatostatin naive and people who have already been treated with somatostatin, selecting those people who were responsive to moderate doses of a somatostatin analog, and then do a double-blind placebo-controlled study in 115 subjects. 59 of the subjects uh, 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 were on somatoline, and 56 uh, of the subjects uh, were on placebo. It was a 16-week followed by a 32-week. 16 weeks is a, a, a double-blind placebo control, and the 32 weeks was an open-label continuation. The end point in the study was to show that you could um, uh, uh, pre uh, prevent escape from the treatment of, uh, 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 with somatostatin analogs with using somatoline. So that it's quite a neat idea is that we know that 40% of people who've been put on other somatostatin analogs escape from treatment. The diarrhea comes back, the flushing comes back, and here the question was, could we stop that? And the answer to that simply is yes, that does happen, and it happens uh, in about 40% of people, which is about how many people we were losing the other way. And the second thing is, well, what were the differences? Were, were there differences in the age, the gender, uh, the sex, and uh, the duration of the disease, the onset of the disease, and so forth? And some very nice things happen, is that if you look at all the variables, somatoline or lanureotide was effective, equally effective, right across the board, except for one. And that is, if you were grossly obese and you had a BMI of over 30, you didn't respond very well. But if you were male, if you were female, if, if you were older, if you were younger, all these people responded uh, to the drug. If you had long duration of disease, short duration, you got a response in each one of these categories. So the final statement I would make to you is that this is a very nice addition to all categories of people that are affected or afflicted by carcinoid uh, syndrome and that it is capable of treating the symptom complex in addition to what we now know is that it is capable of restraining the tumor. This is the only drug that has been approved certainly in the United States and by the EU for the treatment of the symptoms as well as uh, containing tumor growth.